Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly Only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes Just to let you know there is, is a new timetable Sounds like being back at school, doesn't it? The new timetable is as such. Is as such. Every Monday, I will be releasing a new Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. And then every Tuesday there will be a deep sleep whisper hypnosis. Every Wednesday relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Thursday let me bore you to sleep. Friday deep sleep whisper hypnosis. Saturday relaxation hypnosis, stress, anxiety, panic attacks. And lastly Sunday let me bore you to sleep. So that, starting from today, is the timetable. Uh, so you kind of get an, an idea when things are going to be coming. What I would thought I would do today, um, before I start... I actually spent a few hours studying um, sleep, would you believe? Uh, I don't just make this stuff up, I actually do make it, I do make it up, but I do also study. And uh, a few points came to mind as I was reading this textbook. So I was sitting in the library and... um, got a bit of a cough at the moment so I'll just let you know I have to put it on mute every now and then to uh, to cough just had it for a couple of weeks one of the things that's come along that kind of jumped out of the page to me was that Sleep and anxiety are kind of, I don't want to use the word war, but opposites. And a lot of reasons that people struggle to get to sleep is because of anxiety or racing thoughts. And a couple of things that they said in this book actually really resonated with me. And I'll tell you what they are. One of the things was that... And I don't know if anyone really knows the reason. But the time that we have racing thoughts is generally in the evening and you may say yeah but that's when we go to sleep that's the time to you know that's when we're in bed well I've tested this theory because I go to sleep during the day Often, as well as in the evening, I go to sleep different times. Not because I've got a sleep issue or sleep problems. I'm just really lazy, and uh, I, you know, I I do different things at different times of the day, and um, what I've noticed is. Never, ever, ever have trouble sleeping when I go for a nap. 
So it was just a nap. I had one today. I got up at 10 to 9 this morning. Had breakfast, you know, had a bath, all that stuff. Went out and as I said, I, I went to the library and I was studying. Studying the a textbook on sleeping. And when I got home, I was up for a little bit and then I went to went for a nap about I don't know was it probably just 4.30 something like that and I just fell asleep instantly I woke up probably an hour maybe later I felt fine But there was no thinking. There was no racing of thoughts. There was no... I didn't want to go to sleep. I just... Just decided to lay down and have a rest. I didn't need to go to sleep. I was a little bit tired. But I just fancied... doing nothing you know just resting but I didn't need to go to sleep I didn't necessarily want to go to sleep I wasn't egging myself on I wasn't putting pressure upon myself there was no racing of thoughts there was no constant you know battle between feeling tired and you know needing to go to sleep because I've got to get up in the morning and I've got to do this and do that and and I just fall asleep easily and it just feels very different when pressure is put on that pressure to sleep that pressure to I must fall asleep now I've now laying I'm laying in the particular uh, position therefore I must sleep and what was interesting about this is the book I was reading was talking about children going to sleep and actually if the child is not ready to go to sleep then sticking them in a bed and forcing them to stay in that bed can actually cause a sleep disorder within that child because they become anxious and they start listening to things and it's, it's dark and a child's mind is so active and creative as we all of our minds are but with a child it's like a bit quite um, there's a line isn't there <laughs> between reality and fantasy with children young children So the kind of the theory or the result of that idea was actually is to go to sleep when you're tired and not try to force yourself to go to sleep. Because of the anxiety because when we sit, lay there in bed, I don't know about you, but I've, I've done this in the past, I lay there in bed and said to myself, right, I've got to sleep now. And, you know, in the past, I've spent pretty much 
oh, I don't know, three, four hours. Trying to go to sleep. And looking at the clock, thinking, I've got six hours left before I've got to get up. I've got five hours left before I've got to get up. I've only got four hours left to sleep. And then the, the alarm goes off and it's time to get up. And that was four hours of very unpleasant anxiety leading up to actually falling asleep. And I know that not everybody has the opportunity to only go to sleep when they're tired. You know, it's not everybody can uh, go to bed at 10 o'clock. Excuse me, I'm going to cough in a minute. And go to bed at 10 o'clock because they need to be up at 6 in the morning. And then they feel wide awake, so they think, well, I'll just get up again and watch telly until I'm tired and stay up for another two or three hours. Now, I know not everybody has the luxury of being able to do that because then you're left with you know, very you know, less sleep than perhaps you need to be functioning in a way that you would like to be the next day, fully awake. During the day, There is something that I think when you listen to these recordings and you listen to anything, something about the intention, the intention of accepting changes into your life, you know, into your mind in this particular aspect when it comes to sleeping. Realising there's lots of different ways to get where you want to be. There's also lots of different ways that are not going to work. For example, you can't force yourself to go to sleep. You can't force yourself to be relaxed. You can't force yourself to be attracted to someone can't force yourself to feel hungry you know those those kind of things they're natural processes but the fact that they are natural processes means it's brilliant and what I mean by that is it's natural you don't really have to do anything because it's going to happen anyway. So no matter what you do, no matter what I do, we will eventually fall asleep whether we want to or not. So we can all stay awake as long as we can. We can all have a competition. And no matter how much money you're going to win. You know, if someone said to you, you've got to stay awake for seven whole days, not even micro sleep. You know, there'd be monitors on your eyelids or you, so they could check whether or not you fell asleep a little bit. No one would, no one would win. We wouldn't win the money. There might be the, there might be people out there that can do it. So it's, it's pretty silly to say that no one can. There may be people that can. And I imagine drug-induced could possibly get someone to that point if they were taking amphetamines and speed and, you know, maybe they could stay awake for seven days constantly. I don't know. It would be very unhealthy, extremely um, mentally unhealthy and physically, I'm guessing. 
just on a like a general scale of like normality just people like general population you try and stay awake someone says to you if you stay awake for a whole month I'll give you a billion dollars you couldn't do it you could not do it impossible I would even go as far as to say if someone said if you can stay anxious for a whole month non-stop you get a billion dollars you can do it because it doesn't work that way because no one chooses to be anxious once you choose to do it it won't play along because it goes against <laughs> how can you choose that it wouldn't happen it would break up the cycle it would it'd be an interrupter it would be like breaking the the electrical current or when anxiety goes against sleep anxiety being the we could say the cause of insomnia anxiety stress you know that the mind chattering uh, excessive worrying that maybe has got in a way in the past with falling asleep naturally sleep always wins in the end sleep always wins always it's not even um, a maybe or a question mark or a possibility it's a definite sleep always wins eventually it may not seem like it and that's the other side of things as well, isn't it? That I don't know about you, but I, you know, we all can have a tendency to generalize in a sense of uh, saying, Oh, I've had a sleep, I've not been sleeping properly for however long and it gets to the point where it seems like it's you've never had a decent night's sleep for years when actually you have slept thousands of times thousands of thousands of times and you think 365 times a year generally we all sleep Now, I'm 49, so I can't work that out, but it's 300, 3,000, 3, 6, 9, 12. So that's got to be, what, 15,000 times I've gone to sleep if I only went to sleep once a day. the idea of all 15,000 of those have been bad night's sleep would be untrue and as I continue to speak I just want you to get in touch with that sense of relaxation that you have in your body and I'll keep talking 
and I keep pointing out some ideas. I don't know about you, but I like the idea that actually sleeping is natural. I like the idea that No matter what happens, falling asleep will always occur. the idea that it's actually really easy to let nature just do what it does best. to let your body and mind do what it does best. Drifting off. Because it's natural. Because that's how things are. We're all born with the ability to sleep. fact it's one of the few things that we can actually do when we're very first born. And although we've learned all these other things our lives, these things that we can now do, walking, talking, reading, writing, it's just infinite amount of things that we could all now do, that we've learnt since we were babies. That's exactly what they were. Things that have been learnt. Even potty training had to be learnt. But sleeping that's a skill that we never needed to learn.
sleep in. It's so easy because it takes no effort. Just like breathing. It's as automatic as our hearts beating and the blood flowing through our veins. Because those things take no effort. They don't need or require any conscious attention. just happens so naturally. So easily. It's an amazing thing, really. When you, when you really give in and face and accept the reality the sleep in fall in the sleep Sleep in. It's easy. Takes no effort, doesn't need or require anything.
just to give yourself some space. Allow yourself permission Feels nice. To just relax. Without anything, you know, without any any need, without any want, just being. open to the idea that you were born with this ability sleep sleepy.